12. Your audio is on. <laughs> Unreal. And we are cutting to you in five, four, three, two. What is up, everybody? And welcome into the Winner's Lounge. <laughs> 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 There was a lot of pent up energy in that uh, air horn. <laughs> <laughs> we, were in, we were in unison for that air horn. I felt pretty good, good actually. Normally, I, I'm too cool for school when it comes you to that, but cool I, uh, You're so I felt cool. like I was uh, back in grade school. Like a, <laughs> a schoolboy. I was a schoolboy. I was like a happy as a schoolboy. Like a, like a little Argentinian schoolboy. I'm your host, Adam Matas, tonight, guys, here at DNVR HQ, the DNVR Lounge, aka the DNVR Bar. I'm joined by my esteemed colleague. I'm glad that Eric is here because no. uh, there was a moment in that third quarter where I was worried he was going to quit. Yeah. Well, first off, first time anyone's ever said that to me, that you're glad that I'm here. It feels good to hear. <laughs> uh, I, was con- I was contemplating quitting uh, not only uh, this show, the Nuggets in general, and potentially life. I don't potentially know. life. There was a moment I was a little worried. <laughs> Depressed eating down there. He was actually not even watching the game with us, like all by himself. Just like, you know what? Yeah. I need some space. Well, I wanted a table space, but uh, you know, uh, some emotional space as well. I took it personally, nonetheless. <laughs> then I'm also here with the handsome one, the man with the wind in his hair, the oh, Peloton come Prince. On. Come oh, on. Come geez. on. <laughs> don't. You flatter me. It's Harrison Wynn. <laughs> I'm surprised Eric just didn't like take a lap around the building or whatever. Yeah. Midway through you that know what? I know. <laughs> Never too late, bro. I thought you needed a lap. I mean, this was look, man. This was a, a monster win. I mean, Denver wins by 15 points. It wasn't that close because they were actually up 20 at one point. Um, but it was close for most of it. I'm just saying they broke it open. So there should be this feeling of euphoria, which there is absolutely because there's a lot of interest. This was an interesting game. Very a lot interesting. Of, w- w- some days we look at it, we're like, okay, how can we fill this slot or this slot tonight? We're probably not going to get to everything because there were so many things that happened. But it's to me, I got to say, I'm feeling more relieved than I'm feeling <laughs> euphoric. Like it, Denver lost this game. It was a bad Minnesota team and they played bad tonight. And there was a moment Denver was trailing. That, that's where my like deep contemplation was coming from. Yeah. No, it wasn't necessarily just that I wanted to win. It was like a heavily depleted uh, Minnesota Timberwolves team. It was, uh, I mean, there was just so many factors where the Nuggets like, and not, not only that, I brazenly called for a blowout on Twitter. You did? You called right. your shot. I called well, my called shot. I was right, shot. baby. And I was 7 for 8 on my bets, man. It's all coming so up. So coming into this game, Minnesota had played three games without Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, in those three games, they were last in the NBA in offense, last in the NBA in defense, had like a negative 26 net rating, <laughs> had lost close. their last three games by a com- an average, I believe, of 27 points. They're terrible. Like the Nuggets should have blown them out tonight. In the end, they did. They so. did. Yeah, and in the end, they did. So I guess whether where it, you know that blowout comes, you know whatever they still got it. So there's a lot of places we can start tonight. I guess I'll let, I'll let it to you because there are to me like a few big storylines. Mm-hmm. Harrison, where do you want to start with this? What's the biggest storyline that you would like to dive into? For me, it's probably the bench and the lineup that really blew this game open for Denver. Okay. Uh, Faku Kampato on the floor. There you go. (laughs) Nikola Jokic on the floor. Uh, Monte Morris, Jermichael Green. It seemed like there was an adjustment. Who was the other one? Dozier, right? I believe Dozier. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like there was an adjustment from Michael Malone with his bench tonight. Jamal Murray played a lot with the bench in the first half. Nikola Jokic played a lot with it in the second half. How much of that do you think was Jokic foul trouble in both halves? Because Jokic goes to the bench early and then goes to the bench early again in the third quarter. It could have been. Um, I mean, it could have been, but the stagger worked tonight. Um, I I thought it was very interesting how it worked, and uh, it got Faku off. It got Faku off for for really his one productive game so far this year. Three-point specialist, Faku. To call it a productive game is almost underselling it. I mean, I thought he was absolutely fantastic once he got going in this game. And not just fantastic. I mean, look, let's be honest. He won the game for him. Was Jamal Murray great? Yes. Was Nikola Jokic great? Yes. But you, we know those guys are great. We expect those guys to be great. Tonight, it felt like Compasso found... Um, I don't, I don't want to say found a role. Just the but comfortability. A almost. comfortability, exactly. Yeah. And that's it. And look, we've talked a lot about this with this team this year. The bench unit hasn't made sense it's not even we've talked about composite people have gotten upset when we said composo hasn't found a role on this team yet well part of that is about composo and part of that is about just they're running four guards tonight you get lineups that make a little bit more sense and what i liked most about that lineup you get high iq players i mean dozier knows he can be too aggressive at times but he knows how to play he knows how to read the court composo obviously a very high iq player monte moore's high iq mm-hmm. player jermichael green 
All of these guys defer, don't force things, and then you have Jokic who comes in in the late third, yep. aggressive, hungry because he's basically sat the whole second and third quarter and just absolutely takes over the game with that unit. I loved it. I don't know if it happened on accident or on purpose, but that's a lineup that I think has some replicability. Is that a word? Replicability. Rep- Replicatability. Replicatability. Yeah. Replicatability. For me, uh, for me, the takeaway is that Nikola Jokic is like he's like LeBron James. He really is in that he can coast and then he can turn it on. Like mm-hmm. it's the Jokic dope. Like we early on, we were like, oh man, Jokic looks like he is feeling those back to back to back to back to back forty. Uh, minute games that he has to play and he looked tired he was a little bit uh sluggish and then like when it came down to it after the wolves like expended all of the energy it was like oh like now he's just toying with them he's incredible so he just just finishes with 19 points 12 rebounds 12 assists (laughs) think about that that stat line 19 12 and 12 and tell him the most hilarious of all the stats uh oh the plus 27 which is hilarious well well, playing with the bench unit for a lot well composo by the way tonight plus 26 so i mean and and in much fewer minutes nine fewer minutes so um do we have our king of the game already there kale our tiniest of kings Uh, pretend Okay, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll well, stall. I didn't tuned. want to throw it to it. Stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. But, um, yeah, don't, don't listen to what I said. I did not tip it off just now. So there was a part in the game, and I even <laughs> tweeted this out, and I kind of sensed that this was what was happening. Jokic looked like he was coasting in that third quarter yep. because he had three fouls. He yep. couldn't get yep. fourth. And it felt like he was like, okay, let's just keep this close because I know I can do whatever I want once it's time to go. And he was right. I mean, it it was funny because it felt like it was going to take him a whole fourth to sort of win the game, and it took him like three minutes. <laughs> it was like a three minute stretch where he just like completely dominated. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, absolutely playing him when when the season began when they brought in Compazzo. First of all, we talked, we joked about the mini lads, but we didn't really think they were going to play four guards as much as they have. Even we thought tonight. we'd see it when yeah, it there gonna, were injuries or guys out of yeah, the lineup be like or a something. Funny little thing. Well, yeah. we, oh, oh, the mini lads Those, versus like, oh, that's the bench. Unit. That's the bench. Unit. <laughs> no, it's like the long boys. We joke about that, but yeah. we never see it. Yeah. We thought like maybe we'll see it once or twice. Not every game <laughs> yeah. for ten. The minutes. mini lads should have been like a leprechaun that way. Like, it really should have been really a leprechaun. Ever see it, but we, you know, we, we saw them all the time. But tonight, you get those two guys together, and I'm telling you, man. I mean, look, this was a really bad. Just like it, we've learned this lesson from the preseason. Portland was really bad, and you can't read this. Timberwolves team's really bad, and there's going to be teams that scout that lineup and scout different things. But Jokic and Composo looked fantastic together tonight mm-hmm. as a two as a two man sort of group. I yeah. thought they looked really good. Faku just looked comfortable, man. Um, he kind of got going with that terrible charge call <laughs> that yeah, he yeah, got, yeah. which was a god awful whistle. But yeah. I don't know, maybe it gave him some confidence or whatever. Yeah. Um, gets a steal, a nice hit ahead pass, gets another steal. Yeah. And then from there, he was just in rhythm, man. He, yeah, yeah, he yeah. had the ball in his hands a ton. Uh, yeah. He was moving it. He had some nice passes. The three point shooting, like, yeah. I, we're not going to get that from him, obviously, game to game. He's but three point special. That was ridiculous. Yeah, he's a player that needs to, he has to play with swag, I think. Like, well, well, I think he does. So here's the thing about it. Composo hasn't really been in in clutch time, and for good reason. He has not played well in the limited minutes mm-hmm. that he has had. But he did play clutch minutes, I think it was game number one, and he had a big three, or wh- whatever game it was. Yeah. Maybe it was the Houston game. And he had a big three, and I remember being like, okay, you know, steps steps up under pressure. That's what yeah. he's known for. He's a yep. winner of this or that. Tonight, five of seven from the three-point line, and it did feel like all of them were big. Maybe the last one the game was kind of already put away, but it was just the cherry on top. But all of those threes were kind of like good offensive process. But yeah. good process doesn't always end in good results. And we see that frequently. Once fact. you get to late third, early fourth quarter, those shots, that good process, you need to capitalize on them. And he just did on every single one. I think yeah. he's clutch. I have no reason to think he's not. Yeah. I mean, it's but, early, but I'm just saying, I don't yeah. think he's a great shooter. Yeah. But if he catches it in the clutch, Maybe. I just think that he has a little bit. Yeah. I, mean, I was going to say, like, I I mean his shooting tonight was incredible. I I absolutely think it's something we can't rely on at all. Uh, mm. Like I, I would have preferred to see him, uh, you know, running a little bit more pick and roll and things that we'd seen, you know, that you can reliably uh-huh. count on for a point guard. Um, but you know, he was doing some of the things we'd heard tale from uh, that he's able to do, and we we saw in preseason a little bit, just being that like defensive disruptor, making steals, uh, you know getting these like crazy behind the back swing passes and things right. that like we had, you know, come to expect from him and then just hadn't seen even a shadow of since the season began. And that's what I mean. Like he, he picked up a little bit of, um, 
a little swagger, a little. Uh, and the Nuggets need that. And let's be honest, there was in the first half he got switched onto like Nas Reed a few times, right. and you're just like, yeah. oh yeah, this is the thing is. It, it can really be feast or famine with him. And that can be okay off of a bench. There's a lot of players that are mm-hmm. feast or famine. You know, high-profile second-unit guys, J.R. Smith, for example, we know this in Denver. He was a, like, oh, we're either going to go up by 10 or down by 10 here. And I, and Composo is a different player. He's more composed. It's just that he has physical limitations. And those Fucking were also composure. those were also evident in tonight's game. But, like I said, he gets a, you get a little bit of a different lineup with that second unit. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder if Denver found something. Also, playing Jermichael Green with Jokic, like Jermichael oh, Green has great, some Millsap dude. nest to him. He had a very nice game tonight. I, I was going to say that, man. In the two games Jermichael Green has played, he's looked great. Yeah. Yeah. He has looked so solid. You are you feel so comfortable with him out there on the floor. His three-point shot looks great. He had four turnovers tonight. I think those were all preventable. Most of them yeah. were just from him trying to throw passes that he probably shouldn't have. But, I mean... He, he looks great. He's, he looks really good. He's moving good. his feet on D. Like he, yeah. He's like got good positional defense. It's not just like flying, trying to do weak side, uh, you know, pick up the slack kind of stuff. Like he's just getting in the way and, and preventing um, people from driving the lane in the first place, which is unbelievable. Yeah. That's what we were getting from Jeremy Grant. I mean, it's, it's obviously a step down from what Grant was bringing from the defensive side of the world. But like, I mean, his three-point shot looks way more reliable than Grant's did for the entire time that he was here, except for in the playoffs. Um, so I don't know. I like that backwards, uh, but that's okay. Is that right? I mean, yeah, Grant yeah. was Grant was 40%. Like super reliable in the playoffs. No, forty percent in the season, thirty percent mm-hmm. in the playoffs. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, guess yeah. I'm just thinking about the Lakers he was series super specifically. Hot, the La- yeah, the Lakers series. I think I'm, I'm, playoffs, think, I'm thinking yeah. of the Lakers yeah. series yeah, yeah. specifically. Yeah. You know who else is? Everybody else on Earth. Yeah. Everybody else yeah, on Earth true. is thinking of it. Turns out it's the only series that mattered for him. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the king of the game then, because who is it going to be? Oh. Oh. And um, Jokic, Jokic fans, Murray fans, El upset right now. but again, guys, this is all about you know relative, and I'm I, I really do feel like he is the one that turned the game. <laughs> Jamal Murray saved saved them. No, he straight up looks like he went to Burger King in that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jamal Murray absolutely saved. We haven't even talked about him yet, but yeah. he has continued to Yo, look like Bubble Murray. <laughs> Jamal Murray scored thirty three points. This is the 36. first mention of thirty six. Absolutely on fire. This is like I, honestly, this is like a top ten scoring game of his career. And we're just like we haven't. <laughs> We're barely so getting Jamal it. Murray, Michael four Green assists, really. <laughs> zero turnovers, 13 of 20 shooting. Jeez. And We're five like, rebounds. We've, yeah. we've mentioned P.J. Dozier like three times. <laughs> <laughs> on, on a human level with Faku, I'm just kind of happy for him that he had a good game for, sure. for the first time this season, man, because I was feeling for him. Like, the guy comes over here, middle yeah. of a pandemic with his family. Right. All of a sudden, doesn't know, he's in a new country, new team, and he just has such a rough start to the season. I just feel good for him. Yeah, I, I just feel happy for yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, people are saying that we rob Murray, and you're you're not wrong. We also robbed Jokic, but like, there's yeah. there's there's a human interest element to this tiny king of the game. Uh, yeah, people are no. very <laughs> mad. You did like, not it, have it, Jamal Murray. You know, he wasn't the, the best player in the game, but like, as far yeah, as the, the king nugget, of the game is not best player. As far as the Nuggets, I it's mean, not, that, this was as big as it gets for bringing up another element of the Nuggets team that they need for it all to be right. working. If they're king go of the game, the you season. have to keep everything in perspective. Yeah, come on, bros. Yeah. And ladies? It, well, it's also like, I mean, let's be honest. The Nuggets were down, I think, a bucket with like two minutes to go in the third. And if I would have told you like... I think they trailed at the end of the third, yeah. And if I even if have told like, at, okay, Faku's going to hit five threes <laughs> from here on out and the Nuggets going to win, you'd be like, okay, that's going to that's gonna save the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but let's talk about Murray. So people realize that we are also like infatuated with him and what he did tonight. 13 of 20 from the field, 3 of 7 from 3. And here's my take on Murray Murray's season so far. I think he was really hoping to pull a Jokic and coast into Hokey the season Yoki, yeah. and get ready. And I think he, what he saw and learned very quickly was, wow, there's so many new variables with Yo. this team. We're going to talk about all of them because there's some negative ones from today, too. I hope that you all listened to us and took our DraftKings pick of the week to take Murray points in this right. game. Oh, God. That, yeah, that was done in like that was halfway be- through the second quarter. Because, and the reason I interrupted you, because it dovetails into exactly what you're saying, where Murray has come to realize yep. that more is required of him. And so mm-hmm. now Murray points are going to be a thing, like moving forward. And I am concerned. Look, Murray is not wrong to think that, you know, you got to go through the whole se- season so you can't push. And right now the Nuggets are in playoff mode because they just have to save this early portion of their season. So I am worried about 72 games of Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic both playing as hard as they are. But right now it doesn't matter we can't you can't worry about 72 games when you're one and four you gotta or down yeah. two and four but so, know. you know so you gotta you gotta sort of make these happen and jamal murray misses a game he's come back and i just feel like he's been in a whole different level of locked in he looks to me like he did in the bubble and i yeah. wonder honestly if this could be a good thing because 
one quote that stood out to me about from Media Week with Jamal Murray was when he talked about, I wish we could just get to the playoffs. Like, it's hard to go from that to this. Mm-hmm. And I understand that and, and completely <laughs> sympathize with that <laughs> mind frame. Me too, actually. I, I, share that, <laughs> I share that belief. Harrison's ready for the playoffs. But I just feel <laughs> like, you know, he has... There's this like he's obviously Kobe's his idol. There's this Kobe ness to him of like, you know, you there's certain way, ways you can coast through a season with your body or this or that. But once you get on the court, it's go time, man, yeah. and your team needs you. And he just looks so like he looked like a, a, a cheetah. No, not a cheetah, a leopard. Okay. He looked like a, I guess I'll say a mountain lion to make it more okay. Denver centric. He looked like a mountain lion, like a just puma. very, you know, a yeah, puma, if you will. <laughs> if you watch like a puma, you know, you'll see a puma. It's like it's like it has that like intense stare, yeah. right? Like that's yeah. how Jamal Murray's kind of out there. Like he's just very yeah. like focused and intense these last couple games and <laughs> very cheetah puma like. <laughs> cheetah, cheetah was wrong. Cheetah was wrong. Puma though. So Jamal Murray, I remember early in the first quarter, I think he went to the hole really hard a couple times. Got fouled, went seven oh, and nine man. from the line tonight. Yeah. So he got to the foul line. Another thing, Jamal Murray shooting forty percent from three this season. Love it. On seven attempts Love per game. It. That's a really good number, man. Like that's bubble Murray as a shooter. Yeah. And we always knew he was this type of shooter. He's never started off a season good from three. He has this year. Yeah, the thing that like as the game started off, we were noticing like Murray was playing like in a really even way like it wasn't that chaotic energy trying to run around screens like he was sort of taking what was given to him and just knocking it down in a calm manner like standing in the corner threes that were open which you you know if you watch enough basketball you're like oh that's gonna go down that have not gone down in the slightest for the nuggets this season because it's always been gary taking them or somebody right and murray just like calmly steps in shoots it it goes down doesn't touch any part of the rim like it was just like easy. It was baby food. Mm-hmm. As he said. <laughs> baby <laughs> food for sure. Yeah, he was eating baby food tonight. So seven three pointers to your point is great, and hitting three of them is obviously fantastic. But the nine free throws stick out to me a lot because those were big boy free throws too. Yeah. Now he he misses two in a row, which is a bummer. But I mean seven and nine still not bad. But honestly, man, it was deliberate the way he was going at guys tonight in a way that is not always delivered. I mean, we know he loves that mid-range, and he had plenty of mid-range tonight. He A couple, like, kind of sexy ones, man. He, Ooh, like, he had a couple, like, where he gets yeah. to that super sexy. He had some of those patented uh, mid-range Shake, shots, shake a guy, like, get enough. The up and under. The up and under. The, that little fade from, like, 15. The fade from 15. Those are the ones I'm talking about yeah. where he gets a guy on skates, and then it allows him to kind of slowly go into a shot because he's like, I shook the guy so much that I can now yeah. slowly get elevate into it, and he drains it. Um, but... The getting to the to the rim and stuff just seems so deliberate to me. And like, there was, let's be honest, Jokic goes out, it, alarms are going off for this game because it's like, oh god, now Murray has to t- take the team. And the way he carried him was by getting drawing contact. And <laughs> again, I keep comparing him to Kobe because I know Kobe's his idol. But there was that sense of like driving to the basket, like draws the foul, and as soon as he draws the foul, it's like he quits and walks to the line because it's like. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Well, and he's also saying, all right, I'm getting to the line. Like, follow my lead. Yeah. Like, let's be aggressive. Yeah. Let's attack the rim. Because he can set a tone if he does that early in the game. And Nuggets have never been a high-volume free-throw shooting team, like, <laughs> in the Jokic era. They never really have because they just get their offense different ways. But it was a point of emphasis heading into the season for sure. Harrison, have you allowed yourself to dream into the future of you at the ball arena watching this Minnesota Timberwolves Get that team playing in two days. In two days, <laughs> what that might be like to see that in person. Oh man, oh, the crowd, man. the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, wow. There's nothing like a crowd reaction. Flurry, <laughs> flurry, man. Flurry, the anticipation. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. So I, I don't know how you guys feel. I think it's safe now to say that Jamal had a bad first six quarters of the season and and eased into it or yeah, whatever. Totally. But the last two games, he was just so good that I'm, I'm like, I'm back to all in on, on my belief, just saying where my perspective is. And another thing that's encouraging to me about his night tonight, 36 minutes, I don't love that. I, I really hope that the Nuggets can find guys to give him three more minutes on the bench because these things add up over time. But what I liked mm-hmm. about him was he was the guy in the first half. He was the guy in the start of the third quarter. When Jokic and Campasso took over this game, he took a back seat. And I'm telling you, man, that's an important trait to me because he had a great game. He had every right to be like, well, I'm the guy now, you know, but instead he was just like, let let the game come to me. Oh, they've got it. Cool. I'm going to fill in on the gaps. And that's important. Like I go back to um, when I asked him how important it is for him to be an all-star this season. He was like, yeah, I obviously want to be an all-star, but 
I also know that we've got serious talent on this team. And, yeah. you know, when guys are cooking, I'm going to let them cook. When I'm cooking, I'm going to cook. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what we saw tonight. All right. So we, let's hit our first break. So we just talked all of the positives. We'll probably talk about some of the negatives coming up here in this segment, too. Uh, as we speak, Brendan Vogt is speaking kill. with Nikola Jokic, Facundo Compazzo, Jamal Murray, and uh, head coach Michael Malone. We're going to phone him in here later on and, and kind of hear from him what the coaches had to say. But uh, first, Harrison. Mile High City Copper Lager back at Breck Brew. You can pick it up anywhere from Breck Brew, from your local liquor store. Uh, you know the can. Got that Nuggets logo on it. Solid, solid beer from uh, Breck Brew. They don't miss over there with uh, their beer. So pick that up. Sip it during a game. Uh, I'm sure we'll be drinking some during this post-game show uh, like throughout the season. Slam it, slam it with purpose during a game. Slam, it slam that purpose. baby. <laughs> slam that baby. Check out the Mile High City Copper Lager from Breck Brew. Also, make sure to sign up for WGT. We've got uh, tournaments every weekend on WGT. World Golf Tour, the official gaming partner of DNVR. Uh, download the game and then search for the DNVR 4 Country Club. Mm -hmm. DNVR 4, we got three country clubs packed yeah. with uh, DNVR golfers. Ooh. Let's make it four. Let's make it four. Get yeah. in that country club. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've been I've been practicing a little bit. I haven't been happy with my uh, my finishes. I, I've are. given up. Like, I'm, just wow. completely, I'm playing still. Wow. I'm just like resigned to being terrible. Wow. It's like me and Ali but, but, like, battling for worst. Unbelievable. You guys feeling a little chilly in here? Ooh, no. It's a little chilly. Is I this know. a free problem? Are you just growing off script and, and promoting your own <laughs> stuff again? chilly in here. <laughs> is this, what is going on here? <laughs> I love it. I, nothing's better. <laughs> Check out these snowboard gloves. Nuggets themed, of course. There's two styles. These are from they, Rad Gloves, R A D Gloves. These things are awesome. They are awesome. Super comfortable, super warm. <laughs> Check these out. Rad Gloves. Yeah, the they best are, they snowboard are. gloves out there. And uh, anything you'd like to shout out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I'm thinking about uh, starting a nonprofit. Uh, no, I'm just going to wear these. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Nike kill shots. I want to stand for them. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here to stand right now? <laughs> Really? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's a sign. To, what do you got? To, what do you got on tonight? Oh, what are these? A little, uh, little Air Max. A little Air Max on. Um. All right. Are we done? Are we ready to get? Back I'm in? just gonna wear these. Okay. Uh. <laughs> so we have. Uh, we have to get to some of the bad stuff, guys. So the yin to the positive yang, or oh, whatever one is. is I feel bad. like the bad. The bad has got to be the yang. The yang does sound like the bad one. Um. You know. There was we've talked about one of my biggest concerns with this season has been Gary Harris, who just hasn't been good offensively for years now, and Will Barton, who I worry is not healthy, and Will Barton, whose game doesn't necessarily slow, uh, scale down. Now Barton tonight gets eight points, six rebounds, six assists, so he kind of does a little bit of everything. But guys, I'm worried. I mean, he he really took some bad shots, and we talk about the game yeah. not scaling down. He plays the exact same way. He just doesn't have any burst, any lift. He doesn't look healthy to me, and. I talked about Compazzo and Monte and Dozier, these guys that will defer and play through Jokic, and you just feel like that you always know where their shots are coming from. Mm -hmm. I feel the opposite with Will Barton over these last handful of games, and I just feel like a lot of possessions for, for Denver's first unit end with Gary Harris or Will Barton just doing too much and, and it not working out. And it was loud to me that Barton tonight gets 22 minutes, Gary Harris puts 25 minutes, Barton's a minus four, you know, Harris at plus two, which is – Given oh. how much Denver won by plus two, yeah. Which but given how much Denver won by, <laughs> in that Nikola Jokic was a plus twenty seven, and also that when <laughs> when Gary Harris was on the court tonight, so was Jamal Murray, and Jamal Murray was scoring every time down court, and still was only a plus two. So uh, those two guys, man. I mean, I guess I could just ask who concerns you the most, or and how do you oh, handle boy. those guys? Like how would how concerning is it? I guess just how they've played so far. It's. Probably, I mean, I'm a little less worried about the bench now than, than I was heading into this game. And if it's not the bench, those two are the top concern, mm. I, I think, for the Nuggets. And 22 minutes for Barton tonight, 25 for Harris. They obviously weren't going to be closing this game. And, I mean, I've, it's pretty clear that if those guys don't have it, Michael Malone's going to look to somebody else to close those games. Who am I more concerned about out of those two? I'd probably say Gary Harris. I'd probably say Gary Harris. I mean, his shot has completely left him. So, so yeah. the craziest stat is that Compazzo now has more total made three-pointers in this game alone <laughs> than Gary Harris has all season. Gary Harris has three <sighs> three-pointers this season, guys. He has three. I, he was, I think, the fourth or fifth worst three-point shooter in the NBA yeah. given guys that have actually attempted 
I think 20 total. Yeah. He goes 0 of 4 tonight. He might be worse now. So I think Barton can contribute probably in more areas than Harris can. Like six assists for Barton tonight, six rebounds. Harris probably isn't going to give you those things. I liked Will Barton's defense in parts of this game as well. I thought he was particularly strong in the first quarter, but – I mean, they're both a huge concern, for yeah. sure. They're both a huge concern, and Denver was really banking on them both to be big contributors this season. And, I mean, if they're going to be below-average role players like this, Yo, like, I, I just can't rely below on Below average like, really encapsulates what <laughs> Gary Harris is right now. I mean, his defense was good tonight. Like, he had a couple steals. He was, like, pressuring uh, players. But, I mean, wow, that shot. It is – and, like, he was – flying wildly at the basket like taking crazy shots as he like at the rim too that weren't going and like it was i mean it was rough well man. weirdly gary's game's not really scaling down right now Nothing. you know and, yeah. and that's also a part of it is i do feel like if i was shooting like gary harris was i probably just wouldn't be shooting very much and i know that shooter shoot baby well <laughs> exactly that's the thing but he's not a shooter oh. so i I, I, <laughs> and I don't want to rag on these guys too much i mean gary harris like like you said gary harris does provide some elite defense at times although there were times tonight where he was the weak link on like a team, you know, team sure. rotations or what have you. And Will Barton, he does give you six assists, six rebounds. Like he can do a lot of different things. But both of those guys just aren't themselves right now. And um, what's worse, that what if they are themselves? Well, right or now? they are. Like this is the thing I worry about is with, we're talking about Will Barton with an injury that happened ten months ago. Yep. You know, I'm not sure that this is a like okay, he's going to work his way into health. Like it might be very much the opposite. So. Um, as much as this is a feel-good game and there was good stuff to come out of it, those two guys aren't going anywhere. You know, Michael Porter will come back, and, and I assume come back into the starting lineup, but they're still yeah. – Gary Harrison and Will Barton are still key, key pieces of this uh, team, and, um, you know, I just don't know what to make of it. I mean, Gary Harris right now from a wide-open shot is – I never feel good about it. Nope. Him and Wancho were really battling for worst <laughs> offensive players. Who do you feel more hit? confident in making a three, Gary Harris or Wancho? Man, Ooh, no me digas. It's a very tough question. <laughs> very I, tough. I would go. I'm gonna go Wancho. It, I hate to hear Wancho. Yeah, Wancho, this. man, I, I feel for that guy too. He looked. The bad Timberwolves tonight. fans don't like him. He looked bad. He doesn't look good, man. I I don't know what there is to like at this well, point, except for his smoldering good looks. Yeah, well, that's that's, that's enough <laughs> to make up for. <laughs> and his no. Hollywood demeanor. So he misses camp with the Timberwolves earlier this season because yeah. he's filming the, making the film late to training camp for similar thing and then so Timberwolves fans already kind of like hey man like yeah. we've now invested like in you 15 from three on the year I think and now he's you know he's really strong he gets a start tonight and is absolutely horrible um Paul Millsap tonight is a minus six he gets 12 points 25 minutes a couple things on Paul Millsap Denver has slowly gone away from him in the post I mean, remember when he first got here? That was like Another, he actually had been taken over the primary offense for like ten games. He when was he first the got ultimate here. first play of the game. Let's <laughs> get it to Paul Millsap and get him going. Yeah, but they had you know he was a guy that Denver felt very comfortable. In fact, one of their biggest ATOs after timeout plays was to go to him in an ISO. They'd run this play. I think I did an episode of What Makes This Play Great, where they would go to him. It was like one of their go tos. Right now, I I don't know that he's a guy that you want to go to at all. In the post, unless the he post, has an extreme yeah. mismatch. But if you're just talking about like, okay, let's see what Millsap has tonight. I think we know the answer for that for every night now. And it's not a he does a lot of other things. He's a, he's adjusted his game. I just he's, Yo, he's really aged in that regard. Yeah. Who who is the more confusing three point specialist on this team? Is it Paul Millsap or Facundo Campazzo? <laughs> Oh, Campazzo. It's Campazzo. For sure. yeah, it's Campazzo. <laughs> For sure. Paul, that, that's the flip side of Paul Millsap tonight is he does go 4-7, of seven, and those threes were big, too. Yo, he was hitting, like, he couldn't miss a three for the first part Paul of Paul Millsap the, has improved his three-point percentage every single season. It is, it is remarkable. Yeah. And he's remarkable. probably taken more threes every single season that he's been in Denver, too. Um, Monte Morrison it, tonight goes 3-7. of seven. He gets 11 points. He was a plus 13. Six assists. Do you have any turnovers? Nope. That's what he does. Uh, P.J. Dozier. You know what I liked about P.J. Dozier's tonight, night tonight? Very quiet. Yep. Yeah. Very quiet, which is good. Zero True. turnovers too. That's that's uh, that's role player. That's that is role player. role player. And he was a positive. He was part of that lineup that we're talking about. So good, it just happened to not be him creating or finishing the plays. And sometimes that's all right. I hope that he can gets the attaboy tonight for those types of things because no he could have been like, you know, I haven't haven't done anything for a while. Yeah, I need yeah, to, yeah. I need to, to step jack up. One up right? Yeah, we need to get one up quick. <laughs> I think we might be underrating a little bit the season that Monte Morris is having. Yeah. Um, he's averaging because that bench has been so. He's rough. averaging twenty-seven Sir minutes Nugget. a game this year. Wow. Mont Monte has twelve point two points. Like obviously both career highs. Yeah, he has been so solid. The one shining light 
on that bench unit until Jamichael Green's looked really good as of late, Faku tonight, but um, by far the most consistent guy on that bench unit. He's been a stalwart there. And I like him in the starting lineup too. Not yeah. not starting, but I'm just saying they stagger it and he's out there a lot. And I just like him because, again, he's another guy who doesn't make mistakes, defers. He, you know, he knows exactly where his – he's always been that guy. So there's some positives to come out of this. We could talk about Malik Beasley really quickly because, of course, yep, you know hit that over too. Uh, we I bet that over. I hit <laughs> that one. I hit both of we hit both of our bets again today. Dude, man. I hit. I was DraftKings is paying us to watch the Nuggets. I, I hit great. seven of eight bets tonight. You hit seven of eight. Seven of eight bets tonight. Man, so maybe but, you could quit uh, DMVR. You know what? I'm, I'm having a lot of thoughts here. I'm starting to do a little math in my head. Yeah, you, might be okay. you know what's funny? The only bet I didn't hit was Jokic points, and he almost got there. He didn't hit the points? No, his points were 23, and he only got to a paltry 19. 19, yeah. In points, you can't ever count on yoke points, man. Well, I was... Because I was, he can score if I he I was sure to. of it because of Cat's not not being there. Are, are you guys surprised that Hartenstein didn't make an appearance tonight? Ooh, we should talk about that, we actually. We should talk we about that. We should really that. talk about that. So we talk about... Oh, let's talk about Beasley. First. Well, first, just Beasley. Obviously, this game meant a lot to him. He has the most shots of anybody in the Timberwolves. And he was looking for it. He was, going, he was aggressive. He was talking a little. 25 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. Fantastic game from him. He was a minus 12, um, but this game, you could tell, carried a little bit of weight. And I don't think he has any – I don't know this, but I, I don't think he has bad blood with any of the players or anything no, like that. No, I don't think so. He wasn't like a – he didn't go at it, and he wasn't trying to, like, um, embarrass anybody or, like, really – he wasn't, like, jawing at the bench or something like you see sometimes when players have, like, a, a bone to pick with their ex-team. Like, it was always kind of a good vibe. I did get the feeling when he was matched up against Gary, though. Whoa, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. He was yes. denying him super hard off the ball. He was like, all right, G- Gary's not getting one on me today. He also had a couple plays where he just blew by him or yeah. like, turned the corner off yeah. the screen or something. It was like, yeah, this guy can't can't guard me. I mean, there's a little bit of this guy can't guard me vibes out of him. But um, uh, look. No, let's have him pop in in the third segment. We just got a couple. We could hang tight. We see you there, Brendan. We miss you, buddy. We'll have you hang tight for just a second here. Don't put words in my mouth. I don't miss you at all. <laughs> <laughs> the, seat is, the seat could not become more comfortable. Um, but, yes, Hartenstein, let's talk about him. So Malone pregame raving about him. Yeah. Uh, Malone pregame talking about the bench saying uh, Hartenstein is a dynamic roller. <laughs> a quote, quote, unquote, dynamic roller, Hartenstein. <laughs> That's all right. That's, I kind of yeah. want you just to keep doing it wrong. But it I'm going to keep doing it the whole season. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling you right season, now. Yeah. Uh, but calls him a, a dynamic roller. We need uh, that second unit with all the point guards to play more downhill. We have so many ball handlers. Yeah. We, we need to incorporate that more. And then he gets the DNP tonight. Uh, surprising. Do you, do you think that that was because Cat was out, so they didn't have a center to play from their second unit because they had to play in the first unit, so they just played yeah, small. Could, so yeah. they, like, I, well I, I, really, I think that's what it was. Like, Very well could but be. But I was but still surprised that we didn't see him at all. I mean, I'd say most of the NBA plays small. You know, yeah. most of the NBA but doesn't play four bigs. This is classic Malone, though, where he'll gas up a guy that he knows is not about to play. <laughs> so it's like, I want to make sure everybody knows I like this guy, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Hartenstein, really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not going to play tonight. Yeah, but. like earlier on, we're like, man, that Brandon Vogt right, brings so much to the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing full well he wasn't going to show up today. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Jermichael Green has been a real positive. You know, Paul Millsap's minutes are going down. Denver has all these guards. They can, and then when Michael Porter comes back, he is another option at small forward, yeah. right? Like he can he can slide down. So, I like Hartenstein. I don't think that the bench has been. I don't. I don't think it's his fault because I don't think he's the kind of guy that makes things like. Yeah. He's not the fulcrum of it, not right? He no, can uh-huh. fit around guys, mm-hmm. but I, so I don't think the bench has been his fault. But um, you know, the bench kind of solved their problems tonight and it didn't include him so maybe there will be a lot of games that don't have we, him. I, I mean, don't know we'll we, see. we talked about it like just in a cursory way but like just adding Jermichael Green into the mix having a veteran presence having somebody that you can count on to stretch the floor and play down low uh, be able to, to play defense and um, just bring so much stability to that bench unit but also um, Malone was like really managing the concept of the bench in a much more creative way tonight it was like as far away from those hockey rotations as we saw before, like p- players were staggering for really long periods of time. It wasn't like, I mean, p- people were kind of coming in and out at, at a certain point. I'm like, is this the bench? Because Jamal's out, but PJ's also out. Like, does this officially count as the bench or not? Like, so yeah. it, it, like I, I was actually impressed with the way that Malone managed um, rotations tonight. He wasn't mm-hmm. as, as rigid yeah, as, as like we've seen. Show. Especially given Jokic kind of putting him in a pickle. Although it's funny that Jokic played 32 minutes tonight because that's how many minutes I want Jokic to play. Yeah, and he good number. would have played 36 if it weren't for the foul trouble and 
Like I said, Nugget's going to have to figure something out. All right, let's take a break. On the other side, though, we're going to bring in Brendan Vogt. We're going to hear what uh, Malone had to say, all the players had to say. Compazzo! Can I hear what he had to say? I can't wait. I can't wait to hear what Compazzo had to say. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back with that. Yeah, guys, if you're in the Denver area, if you're in the greater Denver area, check out Green Mountain Dental Group, located 15 minutes from downtown Denver. Bunch of us at uh, DNVR, we go there to get our teeth clean, cavities filled. Uh, hopefully, not too many uh, teeth pulled or <laughs> crowns or uh, I, there was a root lot, canals. Or, earlier today, I heard a lot of members of DNVR bragging, never had cavities. Never? Wow. Ever? Not me. Don't look at me. I've, uh, I mean, I've got a disaster uh, going on here. But, uh, Ryan Koningsberg and Hank were having a dent off. I never had cavities <laughs> until college, I think. Yeah. Well, never all, had a cavity. A thing of the past yeah. now, thanks to Green Mountain Dental and yeah. the Sonic Care toothbrush. Dude, those Sonic Care toothbrushes are expensive. Yeah. I saw I was at Target the other day. I saw one. It was like 150 oh, bucks. Top or of something. the line. Top, top of the, the line. line. <laughs> top of the line electric toothbrush. What are you uh, kidding? Top you guys of the line. can get one when you schedule a cleaning x ray and exam at Green Mountain Dental Group. Uh, also, top of the line, Strava Craft Coffee. Oh, you guys can get 20% off a Strava Craft Coffee subscription with the code DNVR20. <laughs> Check them out, StravaCraftCoffee.com. Like it a will goose. have you. Honking like a goose, baby. That's right. That's Again, right. we have no idea what that means, but it Killed could be true. <laughs> it can only mean good things. It can only be good it, We know it's a positive. We don't quite know what it is, but... It's a good thing. Packed with CBD, get a Strava Craft Coffee subscription for 20% off with the code DNVR20. All right, we ready to bring in vote. Do we have the TV set up, the monitor set up, uh, Kale, for us to hear him? Uh, all righty. Kale is like, so people don't know, his uh, the producer's set is directly behind a column, so I can never see him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think and, this and just so, designed yeah, for, And just so uh, everybody knows, that's entirely intentional because he does, he can't. Uh, yeah, he's hiding from me. The, yeah, the eye of Sauron. Is a, <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Brendan. Welcome fellas. in, buddy. Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, we can. Oh, there he is. Yeah, we can. Is that a new headset from, from Mr. Yeah, Vance? I stole this from RK. <laughs> you got it just fr fresh off the chopper flying the yeah, chopper you, he flew right, flew right say, in I, are you in the gulag right now be honest yeah a lot of call of duty this weekend for me. <laughs> a lot of call of duty um well hey man first before we get to all the notes just what did you think of of tonight's game what are your big takeaways yeah well it helps to play the minnesota timberwolves doesn't sure it does. when you're reeling um you know i don't know i heard you say adam that the bench kind of solved some of their problems tonight I looked at it more as, you know, Malone just staggered and Jokic and Murray saved them. You know, I don't know if I necessarily feel like the second unit turned a corner. You don't think that's uh, a solving, though? I mean, because I'm with no, you. No, no, I don't well, think that they can roll out the old second unit again. I just think the solution is play Jokic with them. <laughs> that is, <laughs> yes, you're right. They that is solution. like that has been a solution. Like if you if the people are having a problem, like make it new people. What I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying, look, the idea was that we didn't we didn't expect the Nuggets to have to lean this heavily on Jamal and Jokic already. Right. And ideally, right, we were hoping that second unit could get it done on their own. Right. So, I mean, you're right that that may be the solution, but that's just to say that's not really the second unit figuring it out. That's just the stars saving the day. Um, but I was surprised. I was surprised that Malone, you know, he went nine deep and he still went with the three, four guard thing at times. I, right. I was really surprised not to see Green and Hart next to each other. But you know, when you're, when you've only won two games, when they, they've only won two games in the season. So you can't complain about the process, I guess. Yeah. So take us inside the, uh, the locker room as it were, or the podium, the zoom, yeah. the computer. Uh, well, as you guys take can us into guess, the internet. uh, it was a Faku heavy, um, I actually got to figure that out. Oh, Composito <laughs> heavy presser tonight, uh, where Malone fielded a lot of questions about him. And he said, you know, they knew Faku was going to break out eventually. And it was a great relief to see him play so well on the court, but it was even better to see the way the locker room received him, is what Malone said. That, Ooh. you know, everyone really got up for it. Everyone was really excited about it. And he said, quote, we needed this, end quote. I wasn't clear when he said that if he meant specifically Faku's effort, the win, the feel, good vibes, whatever it may be, it came from Faku tonight. And it seemed like the Nuggets were really feeding off of that. Do you think yeah. he meant us specifically here in the <laughs> in the lounge? We we did need this. We know the team loves Faku though. Like I remember Jamal Murray early in training camp. Oh, I love Faku. This guy right, is a right. dog, man. He, yeah. He's like incredible. So I'll never we forget, know the guys. Love I'll him. never forget the look that Malone gave to Faku when he came off the floor the, after the first, <laughs> or maybe it was the second preseason game. And he looked so deeply into his eyes and shook his hand as though he just <laughs> like. 
I don't know, sold him a house of his dreams or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, also, guys pushed back on the notion that this was a, a like, well, I, I should rephrase that. When asked, you know, about Jokic taking over in the fourth, he just wanted to, to make it clear that he thought it was more than just Nikola, that it was a great team effort. He highlighted, of course, Faku's effort in the third, but also Jermichael Green, he talked about a good amount. I think we can all sort of see some instant positive impact from his return. Definitely. So he felt a little bit better about the bench. He, you know, he said it's their best night so far, and hopefully it's something to build off of. And again, it helps when you get to play the Wolves again. So right, right. yeah, they really do home. need this like back to back so against the Wolves, man. It's like they desperately <laughs> yeah. needed it. Um, he's not wrong that it wasn't just Jokic. I mean, obviously Composo and these other guys. But he's also not right. I mean, Jokic absolutely went out there and was like, it's winning time. Made like, yeah. it was like eight straight possessions yep. where Jokic was just looked like Larry Bird. Oh, dude. Yeah. Where Jokic grabbed the rebound, threw an assist, got another rebound, made the point. Like, it was just like, yeah. okay. But also <laughs> the shooting. Like, there's three plays in a row where Jokic basically mm-hmm. was like, I'm shooting this one. Yep. And the, and he's like drained them, and they were all like kind of tough. And mm-hmm. yeah, man. So um, we did talk to Jokic tonight, and he was asked about his approach to that fourth quarter. Um, Jokic was great tonight, very open, very animated, and he said he wasn't necessarily looking to score in the fourth, but he was trying to be aggressive insofar as he was trying to push the pace. And that mm-hmm. phrase came up a lot in his availability. You know, he mentioned that all the turnovers he's accruing as as. You know, these are my words here, sort of a natural symptom of these habits they're trying to build with pushing the pace a little more. He really feels like that's going to create a lot of open looks for them. And so he wanted to do that in that final quarter. And so that was his emphasis more than just scoring. But, you know, it's kind of rare for Jokic to give that kind of response to say, hey, like this was my attitude. I was trying to get something specific done. Um, So he was really happy with how it all came together. I think I agree with him, by the way, about this turnover point, because I know some people have tried to make a big deal of the Jokic turnovers. Like half of these are, I mean, tonight he had one to Jamichael Green who wasn't looking right. Oh, actually, it wasn't a turnover, but it almost was like he's doing a lot of these where it's like. So I, I'm I'm glad to hear him say that because I do get it. Like it's a uh, hey, we have to be ready for that. It helps us to be able to do this. He did, he's just said, look, we're going to make mistakes, but he wants to build these habits. So I think, you know. It, it seemed clear to me by his comments, like 72 games later, that's the type of team he would like to be as they head into these playoffs. Did he mention the fouls at all? Just, because I think in the previous games, there have been some tough ones early. I thought all of the fouls tonight were legitimate. Like he had some bad fouls yeah. early on. Mm-hmm. It was, I blame him for having to come out of the game today. He was not asked about it. He did not speak on it. Okay. <laughs> so no, Adam. So oh. let's move on. Right, well, uh, what else <laughs> did he have to thing. say? <laughs> I mean, that was really, you know, he talked about Faku. He said, I he was not surprised at all. He said, I personally know what Faku can do, Jokic said, and that he knew he would get going eventually. So there was a bit of change in, you know, Malone really used this as a raw, raw rally around Faku moment. And yeah. then, you know, Jokic and Jamal were both like, I don't know, he's just a player and we all know he can do this. So, right. mm-hmm. you know, they were treating it less like a special occasion and more as a welcome contribution from from a quality player. So Jamal has 36 points tonight, and it felt like chapter one of a ten part, like a ten chapter book. Like I said, it's, it, we, it, it was a huge piece of this game. But what was he like post game? What did he have to say? And, and also, what did you think of his performance tonight? Well, he was great tonight, right? I mean, he was hitting all those tough, tough shots, but he was just efficient the entire time. I thought his stint in the second quarter when he came, and then the third quarter as well. I mean, his minutes with the bench, yep. I thought, saved this game. Yep. Um, I mean, he was great all night, but particularly those minutes when they had nothing, and he came in real sort of Murray mentality and just got it done. Uh, I thought he was great. After the game, Mike Singer asked him, you know, what's clicking for you in these last couple of games you're playing so well? He said, nothing really. I'm just playing basketball, playing my game like I do every other night. I'm just making more shots than you guys expect. So uh, <laughs> it was a, kind of the exact Jamal I expected. He's such a, a nice little smoothie <laughs> and he was in a good way and, and bad way. Yeah, <laughs> was definitely above the media availability tonight. But more than you guys expect. More than you yeah. guys expect. Yeah. So who, who had the better uh, poster tonight? Was it? Uh, this Wancho is what Jamal expects from himself. Murray on the media. That was the real, real takeaway from his his availability. 13 of 20, that is more nice. I'm not going to lie. I don't expect him to shoot that that great. That's really great. 65% or whatever. I'm telling you. I mean, you, you're you telling you too. You said it earlier. Like the, the Murray's emergence is real. He's back. He's bubble Murray. It's go time. We're going to see this all season. And Eric, you in the media, Brendan, need to change your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Have we? 
we not that been like personal. hyping Jamal yeah, it doesn't up matter. at every it turn? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what man. have we not been doing? It doesn't matter, man. It's, it's almost matter. as though Jamal does not watch the DNBR. <laughs> the guy's ranked like love. 20th best player by ESPN. <laughs> hey, man, Dude, this is what all, feels the greatest. It's going to be ammunition, man. He's going to, and you know what? Yeah. I like it. Like, he's yep. the kind of athlete that feeds off that yep. stuff. He's going to tell himself that. Um, you know, it's fine by me as long as he plays like that, huh? But to Eric's point, the way he got to the line tonight, you know, that was the stuff that made me think, all right, yeah, like this is Bubble Murray. Yep. He just forced the issue. He willed himself mm-hmm. to the free throw line. And so it wasn't just settling for jumpers, even though he was hot all night. Uh, just the way he made things happen in that way. To me, that was uh, not just the results, but the process where you go, yeah, that's the guy we saw in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And then let's talk about Compazzo, man. He gets to speak to the media. This is only like the third time he's spoken to the media all year. Look, man, this is like the 20th time I have kicked myself for my approach to middle school Spanish because that presser was not in English. <laughs> um, and, you know, and this is to a street, by the way, I'm not to be clear when I say this, the, the language barrier with Faku is, I think, a, a little thicker than I expected. So bubble fuck. He's like rookie no, or wancha with, with his English. Yeah, it's a little hard to he did. He basically just said, look, I, I was out there trying to put 100 percent on both ends of the floor. I worked so, so hard to be here, and I just want to take every opportunity. Um, you know, he was asked in English, what's the hardest part about this transition to the NBA? And he mentioned two things. He said shooting the three ball is going to help a lot. Like, he shot really well tonight. I yeah. uh, joked that that might be his personal record, but that that's a big part in the NBA. And that he's still adjusting that the reality is there's just more guys that can guard you. Um, there's yeah. just more guys that are athletically capable of, mm-hmm. of what is a tough assignment for a lot of players around the world in Facundo Capazzo. Did he remind you that you could call him Faku? He you did can not. call me Faku. You can call me Faku. Relations. It was getting a little hairy on the internet. So welcome to our Argentine yeah. brothers and sisters. Um, Benvenidos. Yeah, we're having fun. We're having fun. Well, two and four um, we needed to bounce back, man. It was a, it was a good one. There's a lot of positives out of it, some negatives. But uh, is there any parting thoughts you have, uh, vote before uh, we send you back to the chopper? <laughs> hey, they found a <laughs> they found a way to get that blowout in the end, and and yeah. um, that that's yeah. momentum. And so you'll take it against the wolves because that's all you can get. Sounds great. All right. Thanks so much, buddy. This was good get stuff. Get to the chopper. Get to, to the, the chopper. <laughs> we'll see. Respawn. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Uh, don't forget, check out uh, Brendan Vote's uh, grades up on the DNVR coming up here very look shortly. For, look for a look for a, a Faku curve. I, think he, I imagine that the tiny Sorry? king will give the <laughs> well. I, when you grade on a curve, I, I believe he'll, oh, I got he'll get the bump. He'll get the bump. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got you now. I know what the fuck a curve. Yeah, is. I, I was like, what, why are you looking at me like this? <laughs> both of you were looking. At me, so I, I'm probably in the wrong here. But both of you gave me like very uncomfortable looks as I was making the Faku curve. Well, it's interesting now because it's not often that you get a road home and away back to back. You know, yeah, I would like, say it's never. This is like the way well, the NBA you know, is going. No, because be- you do get it sometimes. Actually, you sometimes very, but it's rare. It's rare, and now you do get it. Non, you're going to get a lot a this year. This um, but it is interesting because teams will actually make adjustments. You almost never make this type of adjustment. I actually love that. Like I, I love the idea of there being series in the regular season, like so baseball. That, yeah, well, so that you can actually be more methodical and approach a game in a more meaningful way, and it's not just like. Oh, this is what we do. Let's see how it matches up. You can be like, okay, we're going to actually game plan for the other team like you do in the playoffs. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's more, uh, it, it's probably, I'm, I'm sure the coaches like it too. I think Malone probably loves it. And it's an advantage for him. It's also an advantage for Jokic, let's be honest. I mean, oh, yeah. Jokic loves, he gets a read on people and then it's, yeah. a, it's a I wrap. mean, plus with the Timberwolves, I mean, Barbie, no chicken. disrespect, but. This is about to be disrespect. <laughs> yeah, <it's gonna> <laughs> That's <laughs> how you start what a sentence you're about to supremely what, yeah. disrespect. What, whatever non disrespect you get, I'll pick it up. I will deliver the disrespect. Yeah. I, I mean, Minnesota's path to a win against Denver is pretty clear. Push the pace, make a lot of threes, get out in transition, beat the Nuggets down the floor. And then, you know, Minnesota shoots 10 of 31 from three tonight. So, yeah. like, they, they died there. Um, but like, what's the adjustment for Minnesota? I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know I, either. More, more I don't really more know. Vando minutes. More, we didn't see Vando I know. until garbage time, and I was bummed about Me that. Me too, actually. I like Vando. Ed Davis and Nas Reed. Vando can't get any playing time. <sighs> Our boy Vando, man. I don't know. We might. We don't know. I spent a lot of time thinking about like. The how how Vando was going to fit into our future and how, yeah, he, was such an, how, how he was such an incredible rebounder. Oh, he averaged like 11 <laughs> rebounds in seven minutes in college. We're like, okay. 
This guy's gonna average Remember twenty that pass, His first, oh, his Nuggets first debut that pass. It, it was the best moment of his <laughs> professional career. It came in the very first minute of his of his career. Um, but on that note, guys, we got to see Wancho tonight. He didn't look so good. This was, you know, sometimes I would say he looked muy mal. Sometimes you see your ex, and uh, you know she looks great, and you just are like, ah, oh, this hurts. And then sometimes you see your ex and she looks terrible, and you're like, oh my god, I feel bad. Yeah, and then sometimes you go to like a drive through window, and your ex is working there, and you're, <laughs> and you're like, like, oh, how are things? <laughs> I guess I know. Yeah. That's how tonight was with Lancho. Poor Juan. I love the guy, man. Yeah. I miss him. At he least he got great. the bag. At least he got he the bag. Did get the, I guess he I get that bag. And he's, actually, got the, he's got the Sandler bag, too. Like, don't worry about it. I also that. think the bag is Multiple what he wanted. Multiple streams of income, for I sure. I feel like he got what he wanted. Yeah, he got, he got the dinero. He got the dinero. Um, so it made me think, guys, and we can close out the show, and I'm curious in the comments, this is where we really need you guys to lean in and help us out. Who is it that you miss the most? Mm. X Nuggets players that you miss the most. It doesn't have to be rational, guys. This isn't a, like a, well, you know, the per 100 we needed this. Yep. No, it, it could be that. It could be whatever it is you want. What X Nuggets player from the Yoka chair, this means from 2015 on, <laughs> do you miss the most? And I'm going to give you my list. I've got my answer. You're, I've got some answers myself. Oh, okay, actually, I'll let you guys go because I have a surprise banger oh, one. I have a, a banger. A sub-banger. A sub-banger. What do you, what do you have? Mike Miller. <laughs> you scooped your sabanger. You scooped me, man. You scooped me. That was. How'd you do it? Swooped right in there. Damn it! It's uh, Mike Miller. I missed the guy. It's totally Mike Miller. We kind of have him. It's Mike Miller. We kind of have him because in R.J. Hampton, like got him in a way. Yeah. The spirit of of him, Mike Miller. Like, yes, Mike Miller. Yo, the right. I'll give you the correct answer. Okay. The correct answer is number one, Gallinari. He was up there. He's up there. Number two, Ty Lawson. It, it didn't end Ty, up with well. Huh? The, Ty, the Lawson, Ty, but Ty he Lawson. Of, he was never part of the. No, era. he got traded. Uh, I guess he technically was. They yeah. dra- the year that I guess Jokic never arrived yet though, so it wasn't the Jokic. All right, yet. fine. Yeah. We'll t- kick Ty Lawson out. Yeah. No cake. No cakes on the low. All right. So, no but it's Gallinari. <laughs> um, it's Kenneth Freed. Uh, don't miss Kenneth Freed. You don't miss Kenneth Freed. He had a good run. I like Kenneth Freed. I like Kenneth Freed. He had a good run. Uh, Malik Beasley. Yeah, but it was yeah. fun to have the guy that because Beasley was your was exactly what you like in a six man as a fan. I'm not mm-hmm. saying he's a great six man. I'm just saying every now and then he just drained a bunch of threes and you were like, hell yeah. So let's see. We've got Manimal, Fareed. Okay. Fareed. Looks like, it looks like I was right. Gallinari. And no, just the audience is wrong. Oh, okay. Uh, Corey means. Brewer, which was way, 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 way yeah. before. <laughs> wow. That's really Now you're just there. naming uh, nice. David Thompson. You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's David Thompson. So apparently um, people miss Jeremy Grant. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Wancho's on the list for me. You know, I actually miss Jameer. I was going to say Jameer. And this is oh, another yeah. one that I think fans probably miss less than media does. But like Jameer was a pros pro man. I he just, was really underrated in his role. So underrated. People hated him because they were like, Moutier needs to play more. He was like the Tory Craig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys were wrong on that one. Yeah, you, you know what? Take it Jameer out. was great. Take the Jameer out. was very good, <laughs> especially for the role Denver needed. <laughs> but Jameer was also, I just feel like, um, you know, he helped guys grow up. I feel because he th- he was like a great lead by example. Like this is what it's like to be a pro. You know. Oh, here's yeah. another one in uh, superstar Dev. <laughs> <laughs> we had to fire him. Uh, yeah, what do you want for that? I mean, it was five for five. Now he'll be back next show. Um, Chris Finch. Mm. Chris Finch. No, you don't miss Chris uh, Finch. as a player. That, this, this is just what do you miss? You know, he, he, he was a coach. He was a coach. No, yeah, I know, I know. But they, <laughs> I mean, that's why that was the, the incredulous nature of my uh, Arturus. <laughs> Artur. <laughs> there you go, yeah, Arturus for real. Uh, underrated one a little bit here, but Terrell Arthur, uh, mm. another one that I don't think fans Dark, are, definitely fans man. aren't going to miss so much. But that I, I dude, did, I, I did like my some def- Darrell Arthur. Darrell Arthur was like number one, maybe mm. like uh, Yo, just like class. He's he like so class. first team all class. Dude, yeah. he would be like he was either off or on, and we came in and we just started draining mid range that elbow shot. jumper. Yeah, he just hit everyone, yeah. and you were like, yeah. "This is awesome." This would, guy's me, amazing. Me and Darrell. Oh, Thomas Wells, Tom, for sure. Big, Big Tom. Tom. Forgot about him. Damn it. I feel bad for forgetting about him. <laughs> um, Swaggy P. Swaggy P. <laughs> that was, that One of the loudest amazing. moments in Pepsi Center history. Swaggy, Swaggy P. Swaggy P's first three. That's so random. That was, that was, a, that was a, a, quite the 10-day contract. That was quite the 10-day. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, there's... Ill will. Yeah, uh, Wilson Chandler for sure. I like well, he was another one though that like Farid. I felt like his time was up. You know, like it was. I see one for Peter, Peter Cornelay, which you don't believe. You're just yeah, don't believe. Like, you're you're just naming to... nuggets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quincy Miller, you guys remember? I, mean, I missed that guy. Stop just naming nuggets. <laughs> 
Tyler Zeller was on the team for like a cup of coffee in training camp or something. <laughs> All right. Well, that, this was fun, guys. If you watch, don't uh, forget this is also a podcast. In fact, I'm guessing tomorrow uh, I'll be doing a notebook episode on, on the show. But also tomorrow, the nope. debut, season two. What? Keep it at 1,000 with George Let's Carl. Go. Keep it at 2,000? Keep it at 2,000. <laughs> George go. Carl and I are going to talk tomorrow about everything he's seen from the night. And he's texting, man. Like, he's he's seeing a lot. He's ready to go. <laughs> he's ready to go. Oh, he's he's ready to go. Out. He's going to fire off takes. I was asked, you know, like, I need to be more positive. I said, no. Honest, George Carl. That's what I want. I don't, this keep it at 1,000. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. isn't like sunshine and rainbow. So, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, wait, you want uh, sunshiny dumb takes? I mean, well, that's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm here. I mean, it's so funny. It's like, so, George, what do you think? They're trying really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I like yeah. the effort. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we've been looking forward to that. If you guys don't know, um, you can subscribe to keep it at 1,000. It's, it's, because we have so many pods this year, I probably won't be able to put all of those into the DNVR Nuggets feed. So you're going to want to go over and subscribe to Keeping It 1000. And hella pods, bro. And then also, like I said, tomorrow I'll be doing a notebook pod. I rewatch the show tonight. I'll put up a new episode of the list tomorrow. I've got a couple clips from the last few games. I'm going to add a couple more from this one. So that'll go up tomorrow. Um, so this isn't just a YouTube show. It's also a podcast. And then lastly, hit the like button. Hit that like button. Hit that help like us, button. Help us reach a whole bunch of new smash Nuggets it. fans out there. We want to bring the whole community, man. We're yeah. getting the whole squad under the umbrella here. Yeah, what do you have like? a finite number of likes you're hanging on to. It's yeah. not like timeouts. You can use them. <laughs> Just like it, dude. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Adios.